waitress came by and he dropped his empty glass on her tray, holding up two fingers to indicate refills for the both of us. She pushed her way toward the end of the bar. I stared at him. We were face to face beneath a spinning web of lights. I didn't like the way he was smiling at me, like he knew something I didn't, which I suppose was true. What do you want, I said. He turned his hands casually up to the ceiling. You were an actor, he asked. Yeah. Any good? Not really. His questions were so nonchalant that I answered before I even wondered how he'd known. I decided not to think too much about it. It occurred to me then that leaving this work might not be the worst thing for me, that I'd find something else or I'd slip effortlessly along the path laid out for me wherever it led. Maybe I'd go back to theater. Or the economic growth everyone was talking about might finally reach people like me, so constitutionally opposed to hard work. I could leave or stay or perhaps have a child with a woman I still hadn't met. She could be standing right next to me in this very same bar even, or out in the street waiting to get in. Across the room, a group of revelers raised their voices, shouting loudly and incomprehensibly. A moment later, the waitress appeared with our drinks, frowning impatiently as Valdivia looked for his money. When he paid, she took his cash and walked away, not even bothering to offer him any change. I'd been holding both drinks, my hands icy and numb, Valdivia took his now and took his glass gently toward me. I'm gonna tell you a story, Nelson. It will explain something about your situation. Are you listening? Sure, I said. Good. I know a man. Let's say he's my cousin. And he marries a Swedish woman. She comes here as a tourist. They fall for one another. These things happen, you know. They move to Stockholm. While he's studying the language, he collects a check from the state. A check essentially for doing nothing. Amazing system they have over there. Do you know anything about the Swedes? No, I said. A great people, very civilized, the Latins of Scandinavia. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. The point is this. He sits at home thinking to myself, thinking to himself, this is paradise. He has a six foot tall blonde woman on his arm, a stipend from the state just for learning to speak, and a Swedish passport with an embedded microchip being processed in his name. Life is grand. One day, a woman comes by the house looking for his wife. No, she here, he says in his kindergarten Swedish, at she work. The woman laughs. My cousin invites her in any way. They start talking, they have a drink. She has a lovely smile which she hides behind her hand. A demure young thing, this woman, and very soon they're in bed. It all happens very fast with Scandinavian efficiency in South America. <laughs> ah, he thinks. A country of white women who love to get naked. Paradise just got better. You understand me, Nelson? A few days pass, and the woman comes back. He's at home, ostensibly studying Swedish. Oh, what a surprise. He tries out a few phrases. Fika, he says, which means, let's have coffee and talk, or something like that. And she laughs, covering her elegant little mouth with her elegant little hand. They go to bed. The next day, another woman comes. Is your wife at home? No, he says. A few days later, another and then another, and he practices his Swedish and goes to bed with each of them. What's this about, I ask? Life, Valdivia said. He had the smug look of a charlatan about him. It's about life and illusions and the meaning of home. Listen, I'm trying to help you, Nelson. Winter comes, and it's not like winter here. Winter in Sweden is like an anvil dropping on your head, snow up to your chest, wind that strips you naked, tears that freeze on your cheeks. The sun sets at three in the afternoon, and my cousin feels himself shrinking shrinking you understand he can't go on he feels guilty for what he's been doing when this woman has been so kind to him his swedish is catastrophic he's made no progress he speaks like a child with a learning disability <laughs> sometimes he stutters he blames the cold and one night he makes a mistake of admitting to himself that he misses home which might give you an idea of the kind of winter i'm speaking of desolation he listens to his wife's jazz records and dreams of burying himself in the snow the next day, a woman comes by. It's inhumane in that sort of weather not to invite a person in, and so he does. He serves her tea. She sits closer to him, lays a hand seductively on his thigh, and he says, or attempts to say, you know, I'm not sure what you've heard, but I'm not really in the mood. I miss my country. Do you know my country? Rarely has he been so honest. It's not a trait my family usually cherishes. He smiles sadly and is describing our fair city when she interrupts him. She doesn't want a geography lesson. She didn't come to hear his nostalgic fika say the tourist bullshit for someone else, she says. I came to get laid. <laughs> I'm sorry, he says. 
And she starts yelling in Swedish words he struggles to understand. He can't quite believe it. Can you really be hearing properly? What is she saying, I ask. The leader sighed. I don't care about your stupid little country. Tell your wife I want my money back. Tell her I will not pay. <laughs> this is the general idea, along with various insults in Swedish, of course. <laughs> Seems my cousin's wife was pimping him out. You can imagine the rest. <laughs> can I? Humiliation, heartbreak, divorce, deportation. He never got that passport. He lives in a one-bedroom apartment not far from here. Naked light bulbs, cement floor, the works. He studies computer repair. Over Maldita's shoulder, I could see Elias making his way back. It's a nice story, I said. What does it have to do with me? A good question. It's a metaphor, Nelson. Do you know what a metaphor is? Allow me to explain. I'm the six foot tall Swedish blonde and I run this show. You're the dark skinned third world run playing in a league you don't belong by rules you don't understand. You'll never get a cent out of me. You and Elias think you're fucking me, but actually you're being fucked. Everything you get is because I let you have it. But when I change my mind, when I decide to stop playing nice, mm hmm, I said, what happens then? Valdivia brought his palms together in a slow, soundless cap, clap. Curtains, Nelson, end of show. I couldn't help but smile. I liked Valdivia. I wanted to punch him in his face, but still I liked him. There was something charming about all his bluster. He stared at me, waiting for a response. That's terrific, I said. I can't thank you enough. It's a hell of a story. He looked a little disappointed, but didn't say anything. Elisa joined us by then. He didn't like this kind of familiarity, and he let us know with a glare. Our friend here was telling me about Sweden, I said. Sounds like a nice place. Valdivia raised his palms in protest. You've missed the point entirely. It's Friday night, and it's been a long week. I'm in no mood to get upset. Young people, you just don't listen anymore. Thank you.